All right, everybody, this is your boy Trey. Let's just talk fitness, man. And I am back again with a whole nother interview. You already know, man, if if I'm bringing somebody on here, they deserve to be on here. That's how I put it. That's like how that's how I like to put my brain. Uh, I ain't bringing nobody on here who 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 don't have something to say. You know what I'm saying? So everybody on here has something to say, but this specific person. I, before I get into her, let me just introduce myself, my brand. Um, again, you already know I me. Mean, this is Let's Just Talk Fitness. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, share the video. Share this video because I think you're going to love what's in here. Uh, make sure you tell people about it. Send other people my way. Comment below if you want to see somebody else on the channel. Send them my way. Um, hit me in the DMs if you yourself want to share your journey. With all that said, I want to get right back over to you. Sharday, how are you doing? I am well, and yourself? I'm doing real good. I, I've been anticipating this right here. And uh, I, before we get started, though, before we get started, I just want to ask, if you don't mind, if you could just move out the way a little bit, just just, just let us see what you got hiding back there. Because this is this is unique. I ain't never had nobody do this. What is this, uh, Sade? This is Authentic Fitness, um, my mm-hmm. current personal training business here in the Atlanta surrounding area. What's up? And I'm in Atlanta, too, y'all. So we local here. But... Okay, so just a little bit of synopsis of what you do in terms of your business. Can you just give us a little bit? Because it's, it's, it's right in our faces. So let, let us know a little bit about what's up. Yeah, so what I do with my business, uh, we all know that everybody is a different shape, different size. One plan does not fit all. So with being a personal trainer, um, my goal is to find what works for my particular client. So, of course, many people have particular areas that they want to work on or what can I do in terms of my diet based on my body type? Or I have a history of diabetes. What can I do with foods that will help me reduce that plus lose weight? So I take whatever my clients tell me and then we formulate a plan that is specific to them. Um, Again, one size fits all is not the way all the time um, due to you can do the same same workout program, but you may not get the same results. So my goal and my purpose is to make sure we reach their potential based on what they present, you know, to me based on what the goals or results they want to see. And then we go from there in terms of how long do they plan to work out with me so that they can be able to do so on their own. So a lot of the clients that I have, I'm basically starting their fitness journey. And then from there, once they feel like they're at a point where they don't need me anymore, then they move forward and continue on um, after. And that's usually after about three months. I have one client who's been with me over a year, but most of my clients after three months, um, they're good and let them spread their wings and start their fitness journey without me. That's what's up. That's what's up. We're gonna come back to this, but I had to. I had to shoot it in there in the beginning because, again, it, it, I think the name itself goes along with your personality. From what I know thus far, um, authentic fitness. I, I love it. I love it. Okay, Shade, if you could just give us a little bit about yourself in terms of where you're from, where you grow up, a little bit about your childhood, and you know, up into the point to where you are now today. Okay, so I'm from Phoenix City, Alabama. Of course, I'm going to rep Columbus, Georgia, because I was from there as well, and they're literally five minutes away from each other. Um, grew up with my mom and father. I have two younger brothers, um, Jamal and Perry, um, and that's on my mom's side. And then, of course, I have my brothers and sisters on my dad's side. Um, so growing up in general, great life. Um, didn't need anything. Was a cheerleader competition squad in high school. Mm. Um, all A student, magnet. Um, top of my class graduated Ooh. with the top 10%. I was number 21 um, of my graduating class. Um, from there, went to Tuskegee for nursing school, but mm. that didn't last long. I was there for a year due to um, accreditation and not being sure if they would keep it due to the number of nurses that they were preparing, mm. um, whether they would pass the boards. Yeah. So that would determine you know, if the program was going to sustain itself or not. So from there, transferred to Auburn. Um, From Auburn, I was there for nursing school as well, Um, prerequisites and applying to nursing school. I did not get in at Auburn twice, um, but I did get in at Troy University. Uh, At Auburn, I pledged AKA. Hey, I already knew it. I knew it. Okay. um, Love my sorority. The best thing I've done um, you know, in college and, of course, the general fund that you have in college and being a young adult. Uh, transferred to Troy, where I finished my bachelor's degree in nursing. 
Mm. From there, I got my first job at Macon, well, in Macon, um, at the hospital there, was there for a year. And then I moved to Marietta to work um, in Marietta as a nurse um, there. So from there, 2015, decided, hmm, it's time to go back to school. It was either out of traveling nursing or return to school. Mm. And I decided to go back to school. For me personally, I did not see myself being a nurse at the bedside the rest of my life. Mm. Um, so decided to do family nurse practitioner where I completed that degree in 2017. And it took a little over a year to get a job, but I'm thankful I did. Um, mm. Started my family nurse practitioner job July 16th, which was my birthday, which was one hey. of 2019. And then uh, from there, just been continuing with that now as a family nurse practitioner and in general, just from college all the way up until today, I've always been into fitness, um, didn't take it fully seriously in terms of my diet and everything until November 2013. Mm. And once I started there, that was the game changer. Once I lost the weight from there, it was a goal to gain a muscle tone as well as posting, mm. you know things that I eat, yeah. um, you know, exercises that I do. I also have a history of uterine fibroids that mm. I had removed. So even just, you know, educating women on that in terms yeah. of estrogen dominance, what foods should you avoid or decrease or what are the vitamins or supplements that you can use to help filter out your body to lower your estrogen levels due to the side effects of being estrogen dominant. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you mentioned something that I just definitely wanted to come back to. You said that you were always into fitness. Yes. This, so this was something that when you say that you were always into fitness, are you saying in a sense that you were always aware of the significance of it? Or are you just saying that you were just always very active? I was always very active. So it started with cheerleading. Um, basically, you know, we were competition squads. So flipping, throwing, wow. you know, women in the air. And my mom was introduced to Sensei, may he rest in peace. And if he was here today, mm -hmm. I, I promise you, I would probably be a bodybuilder. Ah, Most likely ah. due to him. So ah. he trained, even though he did um, karate, he also trained cheerleaders, uh, mainly ah. to help with strength. So that is what got me into weightlifting. Ah. So with him, sadly, you know, not sad to say, but sad to say, me in high school, was the strongest I ever was compared to today. So yes, I'm still very strong. Yes, yeah. I can still lift heavy, but the weight that I was lifting in high school, I'm almost back there because I had mm. you know, to do the little pause when um, I had my surgery for fibroids. Yeah. But just knowing how strong I was just as a teenager, mm. um, that's what caught my attention, you know, more than anything. Of course, seeing the results, but it's just like, oh, I'm a girl and I can live this heavy yeah. and I don't have to look like, you know, in, you know, the stigmatism, exactly. I don't have to look like a man with lifting heavy. So that again was a go. And then like I said, of mm -hmm. course, with college, having fun, being in school. Mm -hmm. Yes, I exercised, but I didn't take it as seriously. Yeah. And then, you know, the light bulb came back on fully when I look in the mirror and it's like, yes, I have a shape. Mm -hmm. But I do not see the tone that I would like to see. Mm. I want abs. I want to flex my leg and my arm, and I want to see the line in my mm. arm. You know, whenever I take a picture, <laughs> or I'm just yeah. standing there, and you can tell. Oh, she's lean. What has yeah. she? Mm. So that was my wake up call in 2013. I love that. I love that. No, and and, and if you don't mind me asking, when you you say you lifted back in high school, how much were you lifting? So let's yeah. just say with squats. 45 pound plates um, on each side. We would increase it here and there, but no help. Squatting all the way down, booty to the ground, mm. coming back. Can wow. I do that today by myself? No, but we slowly yeah. get to that. <laughs> hey, hey, at least you're being honest. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't done those, like, I ain't done no weighted squats in a minute. I, I, use, I do body weight and resistance band, mm -hmm. uh, you know, weights, but. Yeah, when it comes to them doggone 40 pounds on both sides, booty all the way to the flow. Yes. No, nah, all right yes. there. Like, and, and what do you think? I, I know you mentioned your sensei. What type of impact did he have on you? Because you said that you would have possibly been a bodybuilder. Like, that is, that ain't no small thing to say. Like, why, why do you think he had such an influence? Or, or could you go into that influence he had on you to the point to where you say that? Well, mainly just due to 
to not knowing, you know, the benefits of lifting weights. Mm. So again, that goes with the stigma. So you see the men with the big muscles, but it's yeah. very rare that you see women. Well, at that time, it was rare that you saw women who were able to lift just as much as a man. And not even that was fun. You know, yeah. the drilling and rush that you get with lifting weights or, you know, we did this weight this week or this month. Okay, yeah. it's now time to add 10 more pounds. So, you know, there's a milestone that there was for me to reach every mm-hmm. single time to get up to the 45 pound weights on each side without yeah. assistance. Fact. So um, he made it fun. Mm. And then again, you don't want any injuries when you're throwing cheerleaders up in the air or you're yeah. jumping. Lifting, you know, the competition squad. So not even that having the endurance to do this whole competition routine without feeling like you're about to pass out at the end of mm. the routine of the competition. So uh, he just still, you know, mainly just what is possible from a fitness aspect uh, for women, even mm-hmm. cheerleaders. Because you know, cheerleaders look at us like rah rah rah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't think of cheerleading as a sport and for me um at central cheerleading was a sport Mm, we ran Mm -hmm. we did as we say was just extra you know on top of what we were already doing in terms of preparing for the competitions preparing for Mm. you know strengths preparing for endurance preparing Mm. for everything that may come to prevent general injuries if we did not work out if we did not run if we did not use proper form Mm. and with him being a karate um, instructor form was something that he instilled in us as well. And that was also what was helpful with the fitness journey also. Oh, I, I love this. And and I'm not sure if you have, if you have like any links or footage of him or if he has like, if he had social media, but no, not now. Cause uh, he died then, you know, oh, okay. Um, so okay. when I first went to college, he passed away mm. uh, from a heart attack though. That broke my heart because yeah. you know, I yeah. can't come home. I, I can't see you. But even just now, if he was still living today and I would go home, mm. knowing me, sensei, you say, when yeah. he will be there, I'm on my way. Yeah. And the fact you call him sensei, that shows me the love of respect you had for him. Because, you know, I know a lot of people that are, in, you know, MMA fighters or who has done martial arts training. And that's what you refer to your, you know, trainer mm-hmm. as sensei, not trainer, uh, more so nope. sensei. So that, sensei. yeah, that says something about that. That, that is, that's dope. How, I, when you when you were talking in regards to you know just um you also wanting a certain type of physique you were saying that you wanted your body to look a certain type of way you wanted abs you wanted to have that line you know all these different type of things it made me go into what i hear a lot whether i'm on live on tiktok um or i'm just talking to people in the dms oftentimes people and it actually it's very common people struggle with body dysmorphia mm-hmm. and so i was going to ask you have you ever had a moment or do, would you would you say there has been moments or maybe perhaps it still is maybe struggle with it to where you have felt that your body was inadequate you know what i'm saying the sense you were comparing yourself to the next person or the next female that you saw um and in some sense struggle with that for a while or do you still struggle with it or have you ever i have not um only because i've always been comfortable in my own skin mm. so with being a thicker woman the weight was in the right places hips butt nice you know chest sitting Mm. up high so small weight so I had all of that I was just heavier Mm. Uh, so just in general I never compared myself to any other woman because at that weight I thought I was bad as well with Mm. that weight yeah you know I didn't see anything wrong with me the clothing I wore you couldn't tell me nothing yeah I took the picture smiling hips whatever (laughs) To a beta suit, I am a thick woman, 175 pounds. Let me show you that you can be thick and beautiful in these particular type of clothing. So I never had any issues with, you know, how I looked or comparing myself to anybody else. It's just, you know, one day just looking in the mirror and I was like, I work out, you know, yes, I can do better with my diet, but I know I can do better. And, you know, that's why I was just like, you know, I'll let, I want to see where I get with you know having told yes i have a flat stomach even though i'm thicker but i didn't have any abs right yes i have pretty big legs but why not have pretty big legs with muscle Mm. no my arms are not bad or flabby or you know i don't have any insecurities with that but why not be able to just be walking in just a slight flex you'll be able to see Mm. um so that's where i was like i said i'm very confident bathing suits and all 
175 pounds and just losing the weight, you know, with seeing where I was before and then mm-hmm. seeing where I am now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't regret it at all. I'm glad I made the decision mm-hmm. to do so. Yes, I love me then. But this is the new me and I continue mm. to love me to the fullest now as well. Mm. So, you know, that goes back to, you know, oh, we like you better this way. Or, yeah, I you was know, you were prettier way. when you were thicker. OK, but and I tell them, OK, she's gone. She's not coming back. The only way she will come back is when she's married and she's pregnant with the child yeah, and I don't yeah, have a yeah, choice, yeah. you know, but yeah. to gain weight. Yeah. I said, other than that, you're going to have to get over it because the old Charlotte is not coming back. This is who she is now. And if you can't accept her with the way she is now, then keep it moving. But your opinion does not matter because you're not the one putting in the work. You're not the one doing the work to get where I am. And not even that, not to be rude. And some, I have to tell them, no, be rude, be rude. look at yourself, look at you yeah, and look at me. Are you putting in the work? Are you eating healthy? Are you going out to to run so who are you to give your opinion Mm. about how i should look or what i should do with my body or stop losing weight when you're not taking the proper steps to be healthier or physically fit yourself so i don't listen to anybody Mm. who comes at me in that way you know you know i listen yeah it comes to where you know let them say what they feel they need to say because they thought they were doing something with that and then you know i just give them my nice nasty response and keep it moving and for some people who do come in my DMs or say yeah. stuff that are rude, and I just tell them, thank you for being my number one fan. Mm. Because you felt the need to say something mm. rude or inappropriate. So thank you for letting me know you're watching me and I'm having an impact on your life. I appreciate it. I got to go into that. I'm sorry, but I got I to gotta know a little bit about your DMs because I ain't never heard this before. Because usually, yeah. yeah, usually I hear a lot of people talking about how 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 much positivity they, most people say they never get anything you mean to tell me you get people hitting you up in the dm saying what exactly like what did, what do they got what do they say so it could be as simple as they don't know the before me mm. so it'll be to where you look good the way you are why are you running so much why are you lifting Whoa. those weights you look good. Stop doing that. Um, you don't need to lose no more weight. You're good where you're at. And then it's just where, and I tell them, can you please just take the time to scroll down my profile <laughs> and you will see the before and after pictures. Mm. If you took the time to do mm. so, you will see where I came from. You did not know I was close to 200 pounds, yeah. 20 to 25 pounds away from being 200 pounds. Mm. So again, thank you for letting me know that you're my number one fan. And do not tell me what I need to do when you do not know where I started. Nice. I don't get rude and I end it with, you have a great day or enjoy the rest of your day. Class. And I leave it like that. And some I have to block just due to, you know, when I say that, then they get inappropriate even more. And it's not even women who do this. It's men. Oh, man, hold on. It's okay. men. I was thinking it was women. Oh. No, my, my majority of my negative comments are from Man, and it's crazy, What's and it's wrong? like I'm not understanding. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> huh, you're you're a man. I'm a woman. Your hormones are different from mine. Yeah. You know, genetically, men can be and will be stronger than women. There are a lot of things that's going to make us different in general. But what made you feel that it was mm. okay to come into my inbox and tell me that? Like I'm going to listen to what yeah. you just said to me. Yeah. And you don't know me. And then, you know, I have those who do know me that will do that. And again, I just say the same thing that I say with anybody. If you was a regular person, I do not know. You know personally where I came from. But why do you think I'm going to listen to your opinion? It is just that an opinion. I don't have to do it. I'm my own person. I make my own decisions. I do what is best for me, not what you think is best for me when we're just friends from social media, and I haven't seen you since elementary school, middle right. school, junior high, high school. I haven't seen you since. So why did you feel it was okay to do that? The women have no issues with, girl, keep doing what you're doing. You motivate mm. me, showing me there before and afters. Thank you for posting this. Girl, you look good. I'm going to be like you one day. You know, wow. just ask general questions. I don't have any issues or I never had any issues with a woman being negative. It's been men. Even with posting, you know, on the reels, just random people. Oh, look at you trying to show off your butt, huh? 
because I'm doing exercises, just showing yeah. you what exercises you can do for your legs. But yeah, I'm not right. the type of person focused strictly on my glutes. Right. That's not the only muscle group in my body. But you're working so, it out. You yeah. Know? So yeah. you tuned in on that particular one. To say, oh, you want attention? Oh, look at me. No, I'm not naked. I'm not in a bathing suit doing squats. I don't have on a thong bikini and turned around and, you know, doing squats. I have on regular workout clothes. So you decided to zone on that. What that particular area? And say a rude comment. Right. And again, thank you for being my number one fan. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and they never reply back. They never reply back. They, they, can't, they don't know how. You know, you, you approach somebody with class. It, it it it's I've I've had the same similar things in in, re, in regards to females, uh, but when you when you have the aspect of class, you know what I'm saying, it becomes hard. It, it actually takes, it takes a person by surprise. It's like wow. And I was actually shocked when you said that you uh, respond back. Most of the time, I just say ignore. You know, people ignore and things like that. You actually take the time to respond back and politely, you know, let them know in some sense that you don't care. You know. <laughs> And you have to sometimes, because if you allow the people to enter your inbox yeah. and tell you who you're not or what they think you are, mm-hmm. just imagine how much that would set you back as a person if I, if you listen. Or let's just say I started my fitness journey and I allowed everybody to say, oh, you look better at the 180 pounds. And I just decided to, oh, I'll work out, but I'm going to continue to eat Burger King, the Whopper, or the Snicker Bar, or Twix, or French fries, just to satisfy everybody else i'm not here to satisfy you i'm here to satisfy myself i got i got somebody it, it's it's so funny that we decided to interview today and, and by the way y'all this interview is strictly random you know what i'm saying she hit me up look, look i think i was about taking that and she just she hit me up it was just like can you do today and again of course i'm gonna say yes because i love doing these things but um it's so funny that you're i'm interviewing you today and you're saying these things because i have someone else who just uh, I'll be, you know, posting them and shouting out their stuff later today as well. But um, they were, you know, t- telling the story on their YouTube about um, they had a moment where they were in a car with some coworkers, I believe, and they were at Wendy's and the coworkers were just like going around the car saying what they wanted. But this particular person who I interview tomorrow, um, she was just like, you know, I don't want anything. I don't want to eat from here. You know, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I think someone the the female in the passenger's uh, side on the passenger side she pretty much like turned around and was just like well you got to eat something you know and she was like well no i'm i'm fine uh, you know i i don't want i don't want this i'll eat something i just don't want to eat this so what you just going to starve yourself you just not going to eat anything okay i'll get i'll get some water it's kind of what she said and she was just going into in, in the video you'll see where she's just becoming more and more uh, frustrated by by describing this but she described it pretty much as peer pressure mm-hmm. it was as if it was as if they were like in there trying to get her to smoke or to go do you know rob a bank right. or something and, and i was just like it's, it's, it's food you know so like again i've never been in that situation but the you know coming from what you're saying about these dms and people who are telling you why are you running so much or this or that go back to where you look used to look I, I can't understand why people would say something like this. Like, it's like, why are y'all coming at people who are leveling up their fitness? You aren't right. doing anything bad. You aren't smoking a cigarette. You know what I'm saying? You're, you, you're doing right. something. Right, and I can even um, piggyback off of her story. I yeah. have a situation with that. And this was with family members. Um, oh, you know, stop, goodness. stop eating meat. And, you know, because I lost the weight or the thing was, um, why are they not eating meat? Why are you not eating meat? You weren't raised that way. Because, you know, the black community, you know, the culture, fried chicken, mm. greens, hog mm. mob, pigs, chitlins, everything that is not fully healthy for you, depending on how you cook it. So with them saying that, I guess they thought it, I was going to start back eating meat because mm. that that's not how I was raised. And I should be eating the way that I was raised. No, I'm eating to live. Mm. I can enjoy my collard greens, but guess what? I'm not putting the fat back in my greens. I use seasoning. Mm. Okay. I don't eat. Well, when I was eating chicken, I started doing bake. I didn't eat anything. I right. didn't cut it off completely. But even as a family member, who are you to say how I should eat? This is my body. I love you. But <laughs> I'm doing this for me. This is for me. And you thinking I'm starving myself when I'm clearly yeah. posting 
foods that I eat. Mm. Nothing shows starvation. My body does not look. You can tell where somebody is starving. Yeah, you don't look like you're starving. My body does not look like I'm starving myself. So why are you saying this as my family member? Why are you even telling me this as my family member? So I think that's another thing that a lot of people have to get out of mm. as well. Again, with breaking generational curses mm. or, you know, generational situations is yeah. just because you were raised that way. Doesn't mean you have to continue that way in your life, especially when you're old enough to make the decision to mm. make that. I mean, I'm, you got me checking to see if it's Sunday because you preach, you know what I'm saying? I'd be telling <laughs> everybody that I talk, like when you get like this, your, your voice almost went up too. You know, we were talking and <laughs> talking about a voice. <laughs> I you saw smoking, but I don't know. It kind of went like it was. It, it got there for a little bit, then it went down. <laughs> yeah. So I tried to egg you on, but no, I completely, I completely agree. Like, it, it, it I again, I've never been in those situations um, specifically, uh, but you know, I have been in situations where I've done certain things, and, and uh, you know, like for one, me graduating and not wanting to go into my field and things like that. I've had that aspect. But mm-hmm. not the aspect of, of of trying to do something healthy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? People look at you like this is not, like you said, that's a big one in the black community. That's that I didn't raise you this. You know, that this mm-hmm. this appealing to how you were raised to in some sense convict you. Right. Um how 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 did those conversations go or how how did those relationships go? I guess if I can ask, if you don't mind me getting a little personal there. Have, well, with the relationship. These are older family members. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the relationship hasn't changed because at the end of the day, you know, I'm a grown woman. I'm not right. a child. This is not like my mom or my father who did this. Okay. This like okay. My okay. You know, it's the older family members. And it would even be to where, you know, they would even pro- approach my mom about it. And she would even stand up for me and be like, you know, what, well, Sharda is grown. You know, she makes the decisions that she wants for herself. You know, I can't tell her what to do. She's a grown woman, you know. So it didn't impact, you know, me at all. Because mm. again, at the end of the day, you saying that is not going to change anything. Mm. I love you, but I'm not going to listen to you. Mm. Oh, I love that. I so, love you, know, you, you don't, you don't pay me this, you know, not to be rude, but you don't pay my bills. You don't buy the foods that I eat. You don't pay for my gym membership. You don't do much of anything besides just being related and, of course, seeing each other and catching up. Mm. But you do nothing for me personally Mm. for me to just stop what I'm doing and listen to what you said, because that's how I was raised. Mm. So that's the way that I have to think about a lot of things. You know, are they pouring into my life in any form or fashion? Are they helping me with anything? Are they paying for anything? The answer is no. Then who are you to say? what i need to do man this is no. not it is it's i'm sorry it, it's I'm, I'm laughing out of disbelief you know but also out of agreement with what you're saying um yeah it's just very strange to me but i feel like you expressing this was perfect because i feel like there's a lot of people going through this it's mm-hmm. almost it's almost like you know i don't know it's standing up to racism or something if you like it's just it's this tension of trying to go against the grain go against the current you know what i'm saying and do you ever find yourself getting do you ever find and, and, and i'm pretty sure i know the answer but how do you feel do you ever find yourself getting tired of this do you ever go man maybe i should just go back to doing what i did no okay okay yeah. <laughs> no i will not yeah. go back i yeah. will mm-hmm. yeah i've come too far i love where i am today uh, i love what i see um this is who I am mentally, if I do not work out like I so like I have myself programmed to, I do not feel right in my mind mm. will nag me until I at least do t- it could be 10 sit-ups. Mm. You know, because I'm so used to doing used something. To it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I may want something sweet. Okay, an apple is enough. I'll go get ice cream. Go ahead and get the fix out of the way, and then I'm good for the next month or so. Mm. You know, I don't just dive into having a cheat day every week. I don't always have oh Saturdays are my cheat days no I have a cheat day but that's maybe two or three times a month yeah it, you know it just depends on if you're going out and even if I go out to eat it's healthy options mm. um, I don't indulge in anything that's unhealthy even based on me being a pescatarian mm. um so I, I'm not going back you I can't 
you can't pay me to go back. You can't convince me to go back. You can't tell me that going back is more beneficial than what I'm doing today. And then I'm in healthcare. So I know from a mm. health the consequences of if I go back to what I was and I'm in my 30s now. 30 after 30, it is true. A lot of things change when you yeah. hit 30. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whether it's fitness, cardio, running, you notice the slight changes mm-hmm. when you hit 30. That is no lock. But think mm-hmm. about the healthcare standpoint where you're 30 years old and you have high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. 